Well, days after the US presidential debate, the polls are mixed. According to a CNN poll, 63% of voters believe Kamala Harris turned in a better performance. But prior to the debate, the same voters were evenly split on which candidate would perform more strongly. Yet have a look at this dials monitoring the reaction of a Fox News focus group during that debate, which showed independent voters overlapping with Republicans in support of Trump's immigration policy. Perhaps that is why Donald Trump has given a firm no to a second debate with Kamala Harris. So because we've done two debates and because they were successful, there will be no third debate. It's too late anyway. The voting's already begun. You got to go out and vote. We got to vote. We're going to this is going to be the most important vote in the history of our country. Joining us now for more of this is Sky News contributor Bo Davidson. Bo, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Why do you think Donald Trump won't go a second round with Kamala Harris in another debate? Well, I think it's because he won't get a fair debate. I mean, let's look at what happened in that ABC debate, which actually, let's call it ABC standing for always Bolshevik communications, a tribute to Vladimir Lenin. Kamala Harris was helped in that debate. It was a three-on-one sorority sisters, David Muir inserting his personal bias and opinion into that debate. I don't blame Donald Trump. Who would want to go into any debate moderated by anyone that was going to favor his opponent over him? And you know what? Honestly, Danica, I feel like the real loser in this debate was journalism and mainstream media. Because to insert, again, that personal bias is an unconscionable thing. It was such a disservice to media, to journalistic integrity. It was a disgusting display what was going on there that night, which I got to give CNN credit. Their team did a much, much, much better job than ABC did. But you know what? This whole notion, this extravagant notion that Donald Trump said of the press is the enemy of the people, it's not so outlandish. Because you know what? If you're not serving the constitutional purpose you were designed for, which is to protect the people and to keep institutions in line, then what the hell are you doing? Yeah, you are spot on. And I like that ABC reference. And it was, it really was three on one. It was unacceptable. Now, I want to talk about the claims by Donald Trump that Haitian migrants are eating pets in Ohio. This is what he said in the debate. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country, and it's a shame. Bo, I've seen the memes online. Some are actually quite funny. But are people really eating cats and dogs out there? What, what exactly is going on? Well, according to Citizen Reports, they are. But let's go back to the media for a second that I just referenced in your last question. Media has not done its job. If you want to know the answer, Danica, you got to go investigate it. That's what investigative journalism in, is, which is why the media is not doing its job yet again. And I got to have a separate point here about the cats, because I think cats are actually an interesting part of this election. You have the childless cat ladies, remember, uh, versus those who don't want their cats to be eaten. That's kind of the two camps that we're seeing right now. Speaking of childless cat ladies, days after endorsing Kamala Harris, Taylor Swift, a self-confessed childless cat lady, I will put it that way, chose her words carefully while talking about the 2024 election at the MTV Video Music Awards. This is what she said. Thank you for what you've done. And the fact that this is a fan-voted award and you voted for this, I, I appreciate it so much. And if you are over 18, please register to vote for something else that's very important coming out. The 2024 presidential election. Bo, with all the hype around Swift endorsing Kamala, will this actually get young people out voting? Because this is key here. There is a difference between the hype and the actual translation into votes. Well, bear in mind that you have a lot, a, a big faction of Swifties who are Swifties for Trump. So I'll just be honest with you. I don't think that people need to take their political advice from someone who makes a lot of bad decisions in men. But let's just look at what she said on face value. She wants someone to champion these rights that she claims are so near and dear to her. Let's go by them one by one. Does she like speech or expression? I would say so. She's an artist. Will Democrats suppress speech? Does she want capital gains to be taxed? Well, she's rich. I wouldn't think so. Does she 
need a sex change? I don't think so. Does she want IVF? Well, she is a childless cat lady. I don't know if she needs IVF, but even if she does, that's another point for Trump because he's for IVF. And then finally, does she want a good economy so that her fans can go and buy her ridiculously expensive tickets? I would say, hell yes. So if she wants to mobilize her fans to go out and vote for someone, I'm all for it because all of those rights and that she wants to be championed are embodied in Donald Trump. Yeah, really good point. Bo Davidson, great to have you on. Thank you. Always a pleasure.